Hey folks, welcome back to KCA Ranch and Homestead. Uh, today I want to do a short video on something that a lot of people are uncomfortable with, and that's butchering your own animals. Uh, part of the self-sustaining lifestyle is not relying on the grocery stores and HelloFresh or whatever else kind of food delivery that will disappear if the world ever goes to crap worse than it is. So I just want to talk a little bit today about how we uh, process, butcher, raise, process one of our main protein sources, which is meat rabbits. So we're going to go through some steps on how to do that. Obviously, YouTube's not going to let me show how I do it from start to finish, but you'll get the point. So if you don't want to watch this video, turn it off now. Uh, this rabbit over here is sold. It's a breeder rabbit, breeder quality rabbit. These rabbits here are going to freezer camp and I've already butchered uh, two out of this one and I'm about to butcher another one. So there's all kinds of tools out there for butchering rabbits. There's hopper poppers that dislocate the neck. Uh, there's choker, uh, not chokers, but some other little sticks for dislocating the neck. Um, I find that it leaves a lot of bruising on the rabbit and it stresses out the rabbit. Uh, whenever you're taking care of them that way. So what I have found to work for me the best is a pellet gun. I've got an old school uh, Benjamin pellet gun. Belonged to my wife's grandfather. I think it was made in 1955. 22 caliber pellet gun. And then I put the rabbit inside that little milk crate, tall milk crate and let him get comfortable. And then I dispatch him with one shot uh, from the back side of the head. And it's almost always instant, painless, and they don't know what's coming. So I'm over here by a uh, nice red oak tree. And I wanna show you my simple homemade gambrel for cleaning rabbits. All it is is a ratchet strap around the tree, a little cheap, uh, what do you call it, carabiner, just to hold this paracord. And then the rabbit's feet go inside these little loops on each side. And then the rabbit's own weight, or you can pull down and it will cinch the feet into that. And you have a water hose handy have a knife handy. I have some game shears, chicken shears, uh, poultry shears, I guess they're called, for doing some easy cuts. And then have a bucket handy for the waste. All right, I'm out here by myself trying to film, so I'm not gonna get everything, but you can see the loop of the paracord goes behind, behind the foot, so it holds it good. Rabbits at a nice working height for me. If you're taller, obviously you'd want it up higher or lower if you're shorter. Now the first thing we want to do before we make any cuts or anything on the rabbit is we want to get him soaking wet. Why do we want to do that? Go. We want to get him soaking wet so hair is not flying everywhere sticking to your hands real bad, sticking to your tools, sticking to the meat. You don't want hair on your meat, it's hard to get off. You want this meat as clean as possible. You worked hard to raise it, took care of it, and you don't, you wouldn't want to buy meat from the grocery store that had hair or dirt or grass or anything else on it. So we treat our meat the same way. So all you do is get you a sprayer hose and just make sure you get the front, sides, and back. And I'll be back after I get rid of this hose. Just wanted to show you my tools I use real quick. This is an older buck knife, fixed blade with just a little two inch blade with a gut hook on it. That comes in handy for cutting hair, uh, hide down the legs if you need to, and for cutting the uh, the 
stomach and everything open. These are the poultry shears I was telling you about. Got them on Amazon, very sharp. We'll cut through most chicken, quail, and rabbit bones pretty easily. Okay, the rabbit's wet, so we don't have that flyer hair I was telling you about flying around. And just like if you've ever cleaned a deer or a hog or any other game animal, try to start up here by the legs. Just make some little cuts in a circle. Rabbit hair is actually very easy to cut or tear. If you were out in the woods surviving, you would you could clean a rabbit very well without a knife, just with your fingers. And you can see what I'm talking about with the hair. That's some that I didn't get wet. You want to spray your hands off and your tools off a lot. This is that gut hook I was telling you about. If you want, just like on a deer or other animal. And normally I'd already be pulling the hide off of him, but it's hard to get everything done like this. I'm constantly taking the hair off just in case I'm gonna do this other leg down the leg like I said I'm making this a lot slower than you really would have to do it okay before we start pulling hide you also want to get the uh, the tail it's got a little bone in it Right there is a tailbone, pretty easy to cut through. All right, another step you can do to make pulling the hide off easier is to go ahead and cut the front feet off first. See, you'll feel that joint where it bends. Okay, now the fun part. I'm getting all the big hair off. Not a lot of hair on there, but. Alright, you want to pull down until it feels like you're maybe going to pull the rabbit off of the skinner. Once you do that, you grab the front legs, poke your thumb through, pull it out. If you hadn't cut those feet off, you'd be struggling right now to try to do that and get hair everywhere. So we got the feet out. We want to make sure we got access underneath the arms. Okay. So what you want to do is get a get a pretty good strong pull and start working your knife around. If you're squeamish, fast forward. All right. So you're trying to get in between some vertebrae so you don't dull your knife too bad. It just falls off right there. If you run into a problem where you're having to saw, move your knife up or down just a few millimeters. All right, the rabbit is cleaned off. I got my knife and hands cleaned off. Oop. And we're just going to grab a little of this skin right here. The, thin, the skin is very, very thin, so you got to be careful. And this is where that gut hook comes in to play. All right, now we've got a uh, joint right here. Some You don't want to push too hard. Sometimes it can press urine out. I'm gonna try to do it without, I'm trying not to. Uh, the bladder is sitting right up in here. All 
All right, with the rabbit, you can put your fingers behind it. Open that up a little bit. Let's see what we got here. Right there is his bladder. You want to be careful and get rid of that as high up as you can so you don't get any urine on your meat. And don't just drop it because it'll spill. So we want to make sure we clean out the poop. It happens. It's all right. We're going to clean him off good. And then I'm going to try to get most of that poop out. So now we're going to finish up with our gut hook. If you don't want to puncture the guts, you can hold your fingers up there. Be careful. All right. These are called dog treats, a.k.a. kidneys. Daisy. Kidneys, uh, liver lungs those are all organ meat that can be used as dog treats or you can eat them yourself i wouldn't eat anything except for the liver but that's personal preference all right this is the stomach these are the intestines this is the liver it's actually great catfish bait or uh, fry it up in a pan if you like liver and onions but um, this is probably better than beef liver we had it a lot when i was a kid and if you're going to eat the liver, keep it in one piece. That's the gallbladder. You can work that out with your knife. I'm not going to do it. Daisy, one more. So nothing goes to waste around here except a little bit of guts. All right. So the only thing left now are the lungs. That's the pink lungs right there. I want to finish my cut down to the neck. It could get a little messy there. If you do, well, some people cut the head off first to get all this blood out, but it's not like a deer where it can take a long time to process, so it's not like the blood gets stuck in there for a long time. Anyway. Just trying to get the biggest chunks of uh that's really it it's just some blood okay this is internal fat if you had a problem with your breeder rabbits getting pregnant and they had a ton of that fat that's this is about the right amount but if you had fat everywhere that crowds out their uh their uh female parts i can't think of the names right now uterus and everything and the babies cannot develop in there and they will just absorb the babies so you want a little bit of fat but not a lot and if you if you clean a rabbit and it has zero fat you're not feeding them enough we will fine tune these inside in the kitchen before we cut them up and vacuum seal them but i'm just getting out the biggest stuff while it's easy okay Got a little bit of fat and skin here this is actually one of the messier rabbits i've done just because of the trying to explain and the filming aspect all right i'm going to pause it while we clean the rabbit off hey the rabbit cleaning video ended kind of abruptly we ended up doing six rabbits we had some people show up from the bank and reference to our home build taking pictures blah 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 something always going on out here anyway um that's going to be it for the skinning and uh, dispatching of the rabbits and uh, we ended up cutting them up I should have done a video of the butchering part where we cut them up and vacuum seal but I'll do that next time thanks for tuning in don't forget to like subscribe hit the notification bell thanks